Welcome to the case study portion of the Tree Tips tutorial series. In the earlier portion, we covered in detail the hinting and advanced searching capabilities of Ancestral Quest that together form the Tree Tips technology. This video assumes that you have watched that video called Tree Tips Complete Guide and will demonstrate the use of Tree Tips in a very simple example of doing actual genealogical research and recording of findings. This demonstration will be very basic, but for those new to genealogical research on the Internet or to tree tips, we hope it will be invaluable in giving you confidence in conducting basic research. As we mentioned in the last video, tree tips will not just do your genealogy for you, but it should help you locate and harvest the low-hanging fruit and get you well along your way. In this video, I will focus on one family from my ancestry to demonstrate each of the main components of tree tips. To get started, let me create a new database by closing the old one. And we'll call this one TT for Tree Tips New. Let me start in this tutorial by adding what I can remember off the top of my head about my grandparents. My grandfather is Ralph Findlay. And as I recall, he was born about 1897 in Bloomington, Idaho. And he died, as I recall, in 1979 in Salt Lake City, Utah. My grandmother was Lillian Farner. I believe she was born about 1900 in Garden City, Utah. And I believe she died about 1976, also in Salt Lake City, Utah. I don't recall when or where they were married. With that much entered, let's start using the hints. So let me turn on tree tips here in the view menu. And then let's hover over a tree tip icon and enable both the Find My Past and the Family Search Hinting services. Now it may take a few seconds for Ancestral Quest to communicate with these services and locate hints. And here we already have both Family Search and Find My Past hints coming in. Let me first see what I can learn from Find My Past through their hints. I'm very curious to find the marriage information as that helps to solidify this family. Let's see whether this civil marriage is in 1919 might be that of my grandparents. I think it is. So let's review that record. I'm scrolling down looking at the transcript to verify whether this is the same person. We've got the name of my grandfather here and birthplace, so that sounds like it identifies him. In a small town that completely identifies him. And with the spouse being from Garden City, Lillian Farner, this is the same people. What I was looking for here is the date and place of marriage. It looks like that took place on the 22nd of January. Let me scoot this over a little bit so I can see it while I work in Ancestral Quest. And I will come back and edit the marriage. So the date is the 22nd of January, 1919, in Paris. We've now improved the amount of information we have. And as Ancestral Quest continues to communicate with these services, it should get even better results. Let's see what else we can learn from Find My Past. Let me go back to hints. Let me take a look at this First World War draft record to see if I can get more information on his birth. And there it is from Bloomington, Idaho, Ralph Finley. We've got an exact birth date now. 23rd of August. It looks like I was correct on my guess of 1897. Now we can enter the full birth date of 23 of August. So let me go to Ralph, edit his record, and add in 23 August. With each piece of information, I'm getting more accuracy in my records, and as we continue to do research, it provides better results. Let me now take a look at Family Search. Oh, notice we just updated. To find my past, they've picked up another hint based on the improved information. I'm curious in a census. If Ralph Finley was born just before 1900, then a census at 1900 or 1910 should show him as a child with his parents 
and I can hopefully learn who his parents are. So let's scroll down a bit. That's what we're looking for. A census, 1910, he should be about 12 years old. And here's a 1910 census, which includes Ralph Finley of Bloomington, Idaho. Let's look at the record. I'm going to zoom in on it. I could have used the transcript that was there, but I always like looking at the original record if I have access to it. And then let's zoom in a little bit. And scroll it over to where I can see this family. There we are. There's Ralph Fedley, a child in this family. So let me quickly edit some information, add information from this record into my Ancestor West database. I won't take the time to enter all of this while you're watching in the video. I'll just show you entering some information and then I'll turn off the video while I enter the rest. So just a second, let's skinny down Ancestral Quest so I can see that information. All right, so the father is Alma. So I can say add father. Alma, and it says at the time of the census he was 51 years old. That would make him born roughly 1858. And where? It says he was born in Utah. And that's all the information we can get from him. As to the marriage record, it says that he had been married 29 years. That would put the marriage at roughly 1880. And we don't know where. His wife was Sarah A. Let's add a mother. And we don't know her maiden name. It says she was two years younger than him, so she would have been born roughly 1860. And where? It says also in Utah. So that's the information we can glean from the census record on the parents. I'll pause the video for a second while I enter these children, and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay, we now have the family of Alma Findlay entered in as much as this particular census record allows. Let me show you a couple of other th things here. First of all, it's always a good idea to source where your information came from. With all of these people now entered into Ancestral Quest, let me create a record in each of them that will indicate where I got the information. So I'm going to just pick any member of the family, and we're going to edit the individual, and we're going to add a new custom event. For census records, I like to use the residence event type to say we know where they resided at the time that the census was taken. So we're going to select that. The date of the census was the 2nd of May, 1910 in Bloomington, Idaho. And let's add a source. So this is going to be a census record. And for title, I'm going to put down the 1910 U.S. Census. We're going to make this a freeform type of source. And if I go back to the original record from Family Search where I got this, they often down at the bottom have a description. When citing this record, we can copy this entire citation and put it into the full reference. And I prefer to just say this is the household of Alma Finley, because this will document all members of the household, not just one specific person. So we'll say that's a source. And now I'm going to share that with the other members of this family. And let's verify that these are the people we got off the census. So in addition to the father, Alma, who I'm documenting right now, we have his wife and all of the children that were part of that family. And this event and source has now been attached to each member of the family. Notice that we have now gotten hints from Find My Past for almost all members of the family. But we do not yet have hints from Family Search for very many of them, and that's partly because we don't have very much information on most of these children. To get better hints from Family Search, let's now link up our records of these newly added people with Family Search. Let me start with my grandfather Ralph. 
We already have found matches for him, and all we have to do is say link to the family search person. And the reason Ancestral Quest had already found matches, it had already found a high confidence match. Let's click on this just to verify. It looks like the name we have and the birth information and death information as far as we have it is the same. Let's scroll down to look at the families. We have the same parents and spouse. So this is the same person in family search that we have. We're going to mark it as the same record. We're going to link our record with family search. Do a link only. And now Ralph is the only member of this family that is linked. The other members are not linked yet. Having linked him, let me show you how to quickly link up the rest of the family members. So now we're going to click on the blue tree icon to review our record with Family Search. This is what we have in our database. This is what's out in Family Search. I want to go look at the parents and siblings because we just added the parents and siblings from the census. Because of some differences in spellings, these didn't line up. So let's use this icon to line these two family ups. Yes, this family exists in the other database. That is the correct family. They're now lined up. Let's expand the family to look at all the members of the family. We want to link the father, Alma, and the mother, Sarah Ann. And then we want to mark all the children who are lined up to say we want to link them. Here are some children with some misspellings. So let's click on this box for Sarah Ann and say, yes, she's part of the family. And that's her record in the other database. And the same for Lapriel. Yes, she's in the other database, and she's right there. And let's link her. OK, we are now set up to link all the members of the family. We'll process, commit the changes, do a link only on all members. Now that we have linked all members of this family, Ancestral Quest should be able to fairly quickly see if there are any hints for the other members of the family. As you can see, the family search green flags are coming in indicating that we are finding hints from family search. Let's go back to showing just Ralph as the primary person. And now let's take a look at advanced searches from Ancestry.com. I will hover over the same tree tips icon. This time we're going to click on Ancestry.com. You can here see the information that Ancestral Quest sent to Ancestry.com. It's basically all the information that we have gathered so far between birth, marriage, death, parents, and spouses. Let's take a look at this Find a Grave Index to see if that can give us more information on his death and burial. So here we have an exact death date and a burial place. Let's go ahead and enter in the 2nd of December for Ralph. And we know he was buried in Bloomington, Idaho. I could take the time to source that, but you understand the concept. What's really exciting now that I have selected a specific record from Ancestry.com is over on the right, Ancestry.com has now said, if this is your ancestor, then these are additional suggested records for you. If I were not trying to just skim the surface in this video, I would now be taking the time to visit each and every one of these suggested records learning what I can to find out more information about this person as I do my research. But that's enough for showing you what we can do with Ancestry.com. Let's drop back to Ancestral Quest. And now I want to show you what we do with my heritage. So I'm going to hover over the tree tips icon. We're going to drop down and click on my heritage. Again, up at the top here, you can see the information that was passed in to my heritage from what we have already learned. In order to get to the list of original records I'd like to see on my heritage, I'm going to find one of these trees that seem to have my ancestor in it, and I'm going to look at the record. While I could look through that compiled tree that somebody else has compiled, my main interest right now is finding original records. And by coming here, I've now found six pages worth of additional records I could look at out in my heritage to further my research. I've now taught you the basics of how to use the various hinting and advanced searching tools in Ancestral Quest to research your genealogy. Let me mention a couple of other tools in Ancestral Quest that can help you stay organized. As you enter information from these various records, take the time to record the source of the information, both as a source and possibly as a research item by going to the Add to Do item, and eventually you can review all of the items that you've collected for a person. 
This will help you remember which records you have already looked at so that later you don't cover the same ground twice. Also, as you work on a specific person, use the Individual tab. This will show you everything you already know about the person, including his family members, and if you've entered notes and sources and research items, those will be listed at the bottom. This will help you keep track of what you've researched on this person and what you have yet to look for. As you can see, tree tips can quickly and easily help you start and grow your family tree. Notice that each of the services suggested several other records I could review, along with compiled trees from others that I could look through. As you take your time to review the records and trees that Tree Tips puts at your fingertips, you will find a wealth of information. We don't claim that all of the possible genealogy records in the world will present themselves to you through these services. Sometimes you'll have to dig deeper through other sources. But Tree Tips, combined with what you already know about your family and what you can find by asking questions of your living relatives, should be able to get most users well along their way. Thank you for watching this video. If you know of others who would benefit from the research assistance provided by Tree Tips, please share this video with them.